Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. We are back with the Ted Show. Happy Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. If you're thirsty Thursday, if you're me, super excited to have Lonnie Fowler on the show today. We're going to talk about childhood cancer, survival, and paying it forward. I love this topic. I know we're a day late, a day past Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, but it is never a bad time to talk about survival and make people aware of childhood cancer. Welcome to the show, Lonnie. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Good, 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 good. Lonnie and I just discovered we have the same middle name, which we'll share with you later. It is pretty funny. Uh, but let's take a deep dive. So people are going to want to know a little bit about your background. And in your case, what's interesting is your background and your origin story really have a lot to do with the topic today. Yeah, so it was quite a while ago uh, as far as when I got diagnosed. I was actually in high school. I was 15 years old, freshman. I was uh, very involved in sports. I was in football, track, and things were going pretty well. Um, a family of five. So all suddenly in the fall of 95, I was starting not to feel well. I was getting sick, tired, uh, exhausted. And I wasn't getting better. I was even having these sores on my body that weren't improving. So we decided to go to the doctor, check it out. And then the prognosis right then, it wasn't anything serious at that time. And then in February it was actually the day before I found out I was running track, uh, just doing uh, practice runs. And I couldn't even muster a mile. And the next day, I felt I had 104 temperature, and then I felt like more tired than ever. So I went to the hospital, and then they the next more they did procedures, of course, and diagnosed me with AML leukemia. And then so, I, what is I'm I'm I have a couple of questions. We've got a couple of questions from people before we went live about this. You you describe how you were feeling. Like most kids would probably chalk that up. Parents too to I'm just running myself ragged, I'm just, I'm overdoing it, or maybe I've just got whatever's going around. Um, so it was, it became so persistent that you had to be persistent in your uh, healthcare, you had to go. What was that like for you when you get the news? Because I've been on that receiving end of the news, not as a child uh, or a young adult, but as an adult, and you're, it kind of takes your breath away. What was it like for you as a kid? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't want to sort of like in that denial moment when I was like, what do you mean I got leukemia? And then I was just like, it was, I don't know. It's like a little hard to explain. It's like this hits you with a brick wall and no, no joke. I mean, I was in for the right of my life because right after I got that news, I was in Indiana and in Fort Wayne and I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Fort Wayne in this. The hospital I was at, I had to go to a different hospital. So I went right on an ambulance to Indianapolis to Riley Children's Hospital. So I was just, I was, I didn't know what to expect where my life was going to be right at that moment. And so you take it, tell us what AM, is it AML? Tell us what, what type of cancer, because I think people just, unless you have it of a specific organ, when it starts to have a name that isn't immediately attached to an organ like I had prostate, you could have breast, there's all sorts. It, it becomes fuzzy for people and I don't, I think they like to lump it all together, but it's not the same. Everyone's different. Yeah. Well, AML, just to put it simply, is a blood cancer. I believe it affects the white blood cells as far as uh, that goes. So, and ironically, last month was also uh, blood cancer awareness month too. So, yeah. And ironically, the color is orange. Is for uh, blood cancers too, which I'm wearing today. Uh, oh, you're wearing very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so you begin treatment. What's that like as a kid in high school? Did you have to give up your athletics? Was this a long-term uh, thing? Tell us a little bit about your journey because I think people like when I I went through radiation. Um, that's nothing compared to chemo. So when you're having to go through chemo and that. I've seen people get really sick. What was your journey like? Yeah, so uh, as far as chemotherapy, yes, I went through several rounds in high school. I missed lots of school 
the rest of that year of my freshman year. And of course, my main focus is, was just trying to get better. So it was very hard because on my family itself and then friends, I met my relation with my friends sort of dwindled too. And yeah, I actually still try to stay much focus on schoolwork. They would give me homework to do while I'm in the hospital. There's one time I actually spent five weeks in the hospital and then I would go back again and my blood counts for a while, go back again, spent holidays in the hospitals with the terrible food, of course. It was just like sort of bummed, but I, I just try to have much faith and focus as possible to get me through because I just wanted to be a kid and just go back to normalcy. So you get through treatment and then everybody waits for that, you know, the, the, your follow up, right? That's like the big deal. You get through everything. And then you've got to have follow-up blood work done or follow-up testing, whatever it might be for your type of illness or cancer. And then you get the news. What was the news after you finished? Well, that's a good question because actually that fall that year, I got not good news. So I relapsed, and which wasn't a very good sign because I went through several rounds already. And the only option, because I talked about it to doctors before, just as sort of like a backup plan. But so we went through a bone marrow transplant. I went through the bone marrow registry earlier that year. So, and then eventually they found a match at the end of December uh, 96. And then I went through radiation and chemo treatment in 97. And then even more worse news is they gave me a very uh, grim diagnosis, like prognosis. I had like five to ten percent chance of surviving that, because I had other complications too. So, and then that. So when you get that diagnosis, what do you do when you get the grim? I, I hate grim prognosis. It's my least favorite thing about this, uh, the way that we kind of treat our patients and handle our patients. You get it. What do you do? Is this where you're going to go? All right, I'm living my life to the fullest. Or did you at that moment determine? I'm beating this. I don't know what I have to do, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. Well, with that, I can use a, one of my favorite movie quotes. You can get it busy living or get busy dying. And from Shawshank Redemption. So I either had to stay focused on doing my best and have faith, or I could just let the doctor's prognosis be the truth. So I decided, That's, of course, just to. You have, decided to push. You weren't yeah. giving up. Yeah. And my mom. When did, and, go ahead. Oh, yeah, my mother instilled in me too uh, to never give up on anything in life. So that sort of was a factor, and also just having a just having faith and believing. So, so let me ask you: you get through all of it. At some point, you get because you're older now. You're not 18 anymore, or however long ago that was. It's a long time ago. You get to a point where you have become what's the latest you're in remission it's not cancer free they don't say that anymore um yeah. you're in remission how long did that take where you were actually able to go all right i think i beat this i would say probably after a year after uh and then they told me i could go back to school and then of course i still have it have yearly checkups of course like of course. five years straight so that first initial year and then five years, I really felt was like, well, five years out, it's always a great sign. So, yeah, so people can person. understand your survival number. How long have you been in remission or slash cancer free or whatever the latest terminology is? Yeah, I'll be in remission. will be this January, 24 years. It's amazing. With a grim, with a grim prognosis, guys, that's the part that I think is so important. Like, it is really easy when you get that diagnosis, even a re, like an adult like me, you're like, gosh, dog it, now what? Um, and if you're going through the throes of chemo or radiation or a combination of both and you have really bad days, some days you don't think you're going to get through it. But um, it's so good to see somebody that has made it 24 years is, a, is giant, especially when you have a prognosis like that. Um, so yeah. what did, how did it change? the way you thought your life would be? Did you go back to a normal life and along the path that you had originally planned before you got the diagnosis or did it change you? Yeah, it definitely did change me. 
I mean, like growing up, I went to church and stuff, but not like habitually. But well, my grandmother also, when I was in the hospital, would read me Bible verses and stuff and help me uh, with that aspect. But I became stronger in my faith. And yeah, definitely. I don't know what my what life would be without the adversity that cancer brought me, but it definitely made me a stronger person because of it in character. So I live my life with just having as much faith as possible and positivity while also trying to bring hope to others. A lot of well, people who have cancer, uh, who are survivors, they'll say that looking back while they were in it, it was terrible. Looking back, it changed their lives for the better. It made them uh, stronger in their faith. A lot of people say stronger in their faith. A lot of people say it changed what I wanted to do. It also changed my mindset as to what um, was important and to not sweat the little things. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that how, is that sort of the part about pay it forward? How did you come to that? Well, the pay it forward aspect was because there's so many people that helped me through the fight. So if it wasn't for some of those people, I may not have gotten through it myself. So I was like, why not pay it forward, return the favor to other people? So what is it that you do? Are you involved in um, childhood cancer organizations, foundations? Tell us what you do uh, that's kind of part of your pay it forward platform. Well, one of the aspects, because a lot of stuff uh, going on in my life currently and last year, but I was uh, trying to be involved. I don't know if you heard of Be the Match, uh, as far as what and what they do. Pretty Tell much them a little bit about that. Yeah, I work with the local Florida chapter here. I volunteered uh, with Be the Match Drive. So, what they do, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be alive either. So, Be the Match, they pretty much help people save lives. So for blood cancer such as mine, in order to do that, to have a bone marrow transplant, you have to get a match and to do that, to have these drives, they'll do swabbing on your cheeks. And yeah, they do amazing things, especially in the community to raise awareness as well. Because just that alone can help save any life. And other organizations I've helped with, uh, one is a local, uh, I helped them out a couple times is base camp, Terry Jones Robbins organization. They do some amazing things. I actually, my goal is to do more with them in the future, but they do amazing things for kids with cancer and their families. And then I I've worked with, the with go ahead. I'm sorry. And then other things when I was younger, I volunteered with leukemia society, Americans, cancer society and so forth, because they do some great things too. I think one of the things that people don't understand is that cancer is a, truly a family circle disease. You you get it. You're the you're the cancer, you're the person with cancer, but it impacts uh, your family, and especially when you're talking about kids, childhood. The families have to give up jobs to stay with their kids while they're in treatment. There's housing issues. There's food issues, there's all sorts of things. And so organizations like, I'm on the board for Base Camp. Uh, Base Camp, they try to fit the need, try to help out in ways that the other organizations don't. Uh, they try to fill that gap. And so there's so many needs that we don't think about. Uh, just having a, a basic pizza, pizza lunch or a celebratory, you rang the bell, is a big deal for, especially for kids. Uh, because it gives them that hope, right? It gives them that yeah. that want and that desire to continue on. So kudos for you for continuing to be involved. Um, what are you, what do you think you, how are you different? It's, I want to figure out how to word this. How are you different other than faith in the way that you approach people? Because you've got a business, you're an older you're a, um, a younger, older guy now. I, I can do a little bit of math, not as old as me. Uh, but I feel like people like you have an appreciation for what's going on around go, going on around them um, on a daily basis. So would you say it's changed the way that you approach people and the way that you approach life? Yeah, that's a very good question. I don't know. Well, 
just give it your all, whether it's in your own life or to others, be kind and go after your own passions. And that's what I learned even in my, when I've grown older, do what you love because you may not give that a, other opportunity to do so. So, and inspiring others to do the same, just to put it simply. So what, what can people do to get involved? How can they reach out to you? How can they learn more about what you do? Um, you know, we got to talk about LaRue. That happens to be both of our middle names, which we just found out before we went live. He's got a business, which I didn't put on there, but I will tag it later. LaRue's Awesome Sauce. LaRue's Awesome Sauces. I mean, that's just such an interesting middle name. So, uh, but tell people how they can reach you and reach out to you and learn more about what you're doing to pay it forward. Yeah, as far as to reach out to me, especially to find out more about what these organizations do, I especially recommend volunteering. And to me, just get hands on and see what they're all about and why you should. Because just be the match alone. I might, the many that they've saved just for doing simple things such as uh, drives to help save lives. And as far as my to getting out reach to me, I'm at with my own business. Eventually, my goal is to take what I do. This is like a long term goal do what I do and also pay it forward with my own business with my hot sauce. So, yeah, you can feel reach, uh, reach out to me on Facebook uh, in regards to that at LaRue's Awesome Sauces. I'm on Instagram too. So, if you want to find out more about me and what I do business wise, you can do that as well. Awesome. So, All right, Lonnie. Thank you for sharing your story. You guys, reach out to Lonnie Fowler. Um, you, it's always great to have a survivor on the show because you want to give people hope that are going through. And especially with your very grim diagnosis that you got, uh, to see that you're here 24 years plus later is such a blessing. So thank you for sharing that. I 100% believe you gave somebody hope today. Uh, reach out to Lonnie, learn more about LaRue's awesome sauces, but get involved. These kids need you. People going through it need you. And not all of their needs are fulfilled by the larger organizations. There's a lot of things that these kids and people going through treatment need. So thank you, Lonnie Fowler, for being on the show. Oh, thank you, Ted. Yeah, all right. I'll have a good one. Bye, everybody.